G'day guys, just a quick uh, um, one on tight junctions. Um, a lot of people wonder, because I've usually say that you need the B vitamins to sort of help um, restore a good microbiome, because all the actual, I've, I've discussed that in a lot of my videos um, on the gut microbiome in a number of videos where I've brought this up. I'm not going to cover that point um, at this one, just so you know, the a B vitamin complex of no more than 50 milligrams for three months with a high dose vitamin D. And I usually recommend around 10,000 I use. Now, if you're overweight, up to 20,000 I use, you know, but make sure you've, you, because of the receptors that are re, re, as require cofactors, both vitamin D and retinol, when you put more vitamin D in, because of the, the amount of free vitamin D that will go into the system and be taken up by those receptors around the body. The problem is they will also start using, they require also retinol for those enzymes, which means they'll pull retinol um, out of the diet or out of the liver. And so if you're doing very high dose, you could potentially, this is a potential, we don't really have good research we just know that um, you know you should never go really high in these numbers with the fat soluble vitamins. You know, about ten thousand. If you're eating um, a number of eggs, um, you're getting a bit. You're getting a bit of liver in every week, and and enough animal fat that is actual fat, whether it's dairy fat or stuff like that. You should be getting enough retinol to sort of um, provide the sufficient. For co as a cofactor to a lot of these enzymatic processes so you won't get out of whack so the thing but always focus that you need that for a certain amount of time because all the beneficial bacteria bifido bacteria the, lact the um, lactobacillus types and all that which are very important critical the ones that get annihilated by um, antibiotics and glyphosate which is also a regist a patented antibiotic um, effect and so it, these factors in our lifestyle up until now that have really decimated some of our beneficial bacteria, we need to basically, that's another reason to get rid of the plants out of the damn diet because they are causing far too many problems. We don't need them. We've got modern generational um, societies like the Inuit and the Maasai that just eat animal products and nothing else. And they are robust and strong. Okay, you do not need plants. And today's plants that are full of glyphosate and a lot of other pesticides and all that, probably you don't need that crap in your body, let alone the deuterium side, which is another factor in, in itself. But this is on the tight junctions um, to cover the stuff that I've been saying for some time and, uh, and provide a bit of background in regards to the importance of vitamin D for tight junctions. And... Let me just share this screen. So this is a study. Vitamin D regulates the tight junction protein expression in active ulcerative colitis. We'll just go through the abstraction, just the general stuff. Um, epithelial barrier function is primarily regulated by tight junction proteins. Ulcerative colitis is characterized by um, Th2 immune response with inflammatory epithelial barrier dysfunction. And we know that this is including elevated um, clonin-2 protein function. Recent studies support the importance of vitamin D in the pathogenesis as well as potential therapy in IBD, irritable bowel um, disease. Vitamin D deficiency is in fact common in patients with IBD and that and common in patients with a lot of conditions. Um, we see it in autism. We see it in a whole raft of conditions where vitamin D deficiency is very high. Since the 1960s, when these so-called boffins decided to tell us we need to protect ourselves from the sun, we've seen an explosion in autism, we've an explosion in IBS, an explosion in all sorts of ailments and conditions, obviously exacerbated by the diet over time, but vitamin D playing a critical role a poor diet actually exacerbating and making things worse remember the i've said this before your from your mouth to your anus this in this barrier is made up largely of collagen and collagen 
regulating um, uh, enzymes, which is their matrix metalloproteinases, are regulated by fat soluble vitamins, in particular by vitamin D and retinol, and to a lesser extent, to some extent, um, metaquinone 4, which is the animal form of K2, which is the only type of metaquinone, the only form of vitamin K2 that directly um, um, interacts with the DNA. So the other ones are only, um, completely irrelevant when it comes to basically transcription factors and regulation of mat matrix metalloproteinases in these tissues. So let's get it right. And if you're a boffin that just likes to push and pedal because they want to sell the garbage like M metaquinone 7 from Natto and that sort of bullshit when most people outside, excluding Japanese, which have a good conversion rate, most of the population have very poor conversion rates and a third of the population usually can't do anything. So it's a waste of money buying the, that shit supplement. Just eat some eggs, liver, Brie, ah, oh, yes, Brie. Canembert, ah, oh, yes. Gouda, ah, oh, great sources of metaquinone 4. Anyway, let's continue. Very important also, because it does have an effect in this area, in these tissue types. There are certain MMPs that are basically partially regulated through certain enzymes. I'm not going to go into all the details. Take days to go through all their biochemistry. But anyway, this is a, just a general quick one. Try to. Anyway. The aim of the study was to determine whether vitamin D could affect interleukin-13, interleukin-6 levels and regulate the um, activity of tight junction proteins, um, included 1, 2, 4, and 7 in the inflamed and non-inflamed um, colonic mucosa of UC patients. Material, that is also colitis, um, uh, material methods, biopsies, uh, that's the sort of stuff we want in studies. We want to be able to look, get biopsies directly of these people and look at what's happening. There's a waste of time basically speculating what's happening. You've got to look. That's what experiments do. So, yes, some people put themselves down for biopsies. Hmm. Um, procedures, medical procedures. Well, thankfully they did because that's how we get information when people do these clinical studies. Biopsies from inflamed and non-inflamed, track of colon and rectum from the same active UC patients were cultured with 125 OHD, which is basically the active form. IL-13, IL-6 and tight junction proteins were determined. Results. Clot 1 and Clot 2 proteins were upregulated in activity of UC. The treatment with 125 decreased Clot 1 and Clot 2 protein levels um, in both inflamed and non-inflamed. So it works on everybody, which is good because it means it protects and heals those who have got it. Clot 4 and 7 proteins were downregulated um, to their levels and their levels increased after incubation with 125. When biopsies were incubated, uh, decrease in IL-13 and interleukin-6, that's what IL means. Um, you guys should know by now what IL means as, as an interleukin. I've been, I've been saying it for too long. I'll be still using just the IL because it's just quicker. Levels were registered. Conclusions, results. Our results indicate the inhibition of cytokine levels and the regulation of clot 2, clot 4 and clot 7 by 125 suggests that vitamin D may represent a potential therapeutic agent for the treatment of active UC. I would say, looking at the literature, which I've looked at a lot of literature, that uh, this study you know, was for a very short amount of time. Um, and that's the problem with these studies. But they did see improvements. They did see the the type of the type of enzymes that are involved in sort of and the and the type of proteins, um, because remember the body transcripts both protein um, machinery that basically does certain certain it has an effect on certain tissue types and all that, and then you've got the enzymes which have got a catalytic effect, um, but uh, the what we can what we can view from this is that 
Vitamin D is a really important substance when it comes to these tight junctions in the regulation of these tight junctions and the improvement. Um, the other thing is the regulatory effect on the MMPs, which I've talked to before and I've shown evidence before, um, is really important. And I believe that it's basically both affecting these proteins and probably affecting the MMP regulation, uh, sort, of, sort of down-regulating MMP overexpression within the liver. I believe also aminoquinone 4 does play a role there as well. I know I've talked about aminoquinone 4 in the past and its role in the liver, but I believe that it actually has an active role also um, as a second. It's not a primary role like retinol and vitamin D, but I think it, I believe from all the studies that I've looked at, that it has a secondary um, important role. We don't fully understand it. We see when, um, when metoquinone 4 isn't very high in the diet, um, it seems to basically... Now, it's very hard to say because um, the, so, some of those vitamin D studies were using too low doses. And the studies that actually use metoquinone 4, they're using higher doses of vitamin D. So is it the higher dose of the vitamin D or is it the synergistic effects? We don't know because we haven't really separated and, and teased out those mechanisms. So all we can say is, you know, if we're trying to sort out things for ourselves, let's just throw both in because they do have benefits. So, you know, if you don't get that benefit, you'll get another benefit. But I can't, you know, definitively say, yes, it's a photo complete on that until there's more research teasing out the roles of one and the other. But I do believe that um, there are receptor sites so on some on a lot of these enzymes, but we haven't actually worked out exactly the we've got like we're doing these petri dish or we're doing these clinical studies, but we're not actually doing like um, yet. I haven't seen one study. If anybody's seen a study where some of these enzymes in the gut they're actually um, radioactively labelled the actual vitamin D, retinol and MK4 and then basically measured those by doing biopsies and then measuring the, the sort of concentrations of those, I would love to see that research. But we don't have that. So what we have is basically research that shows us that there are relationships and regulatory effects directly on these um, enzymatic pathways that we don't have like a exact dose so i can't give you an exact dose in that regard so i know that the body you know needs to have a certain amount of vitamin d for other general functions also free um uh, vitamin d4 which is that three percent that goes to other tissue types for a whole lot of other important roles but the exact amount and all that in terms is hard to say we know that um, MK4 is not toxic, even in massive amounts. We've seen the research that both the Japanese have done and the, the Dutch. So I don't worry about it, honestly. Um, you know, eat enough animal foods if you want to supplement it extra. If you've got those sort of conditions, um, gut conditions, yes. But it's a synergistic effect, as I've said, to basically heal the entire gut system. Plus... There could be other upstream areas like the stomach, and I've done a video on the stomach, or it could be basically another element with the gallbladder. And I've sort of discussed that indirectly in that stomach one. Um, so if you need to go that, I'll actually add it and it'll be there. <laughs> Apparently. Anyway. So hope you enjoyed it. See yous.